Hey everyone, welcome to part 2 of the Magnapan MG1 rebuild. So as you saw in the previous video, we spent time taking the old wire off of the diaphragm and cleaning it of all of the old adhesive. The next step in the instructions that Magnapan includes is to inspect the diaphragm for any pinholes or tears, you know, small damage to it. As we can see, there are a few sections on this diaphragm that, uh, that fit the bill there with uh, some damage. So the solution to this, the instructions state, put a piece of scotch tape over those imperfections. That sounds pretty easy, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I put some scotch tape in the places where I noticed any uh, pinholes or uh, tears in the mylar. The first thing we're going to do is install the treble wire. Now, I like to do this one first because it's a lot easier and you can simply put it on by hand. The thing you need to know about the treble wire is that it is very fragile. You'll want to be sure that you take extreme care in making sure the wire doesn't break at the ends or bend too much and give yourself plenty of extra wire to make sure you have enough to get it soldered to the terminals when you eventually get to that step. Now it's time to use the 3M Super 77 spray adhesive which you can get at any hardware store. Be sure to shake it well. I applied a light layer about four passes what the Super 77 does is it acts as kind of a sticky surface that allows you to tack the wire to the diaphragm. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking the wire and I'm starting at the beginning and once I get to the end I kind of hold it down with my finger and then turn it around and make the next pass along the uh, magnet. Next I'm putting on the first layer of 30NF which MagnaPan supplies you and this is the true adhesive that gets it on the diaphragm. Once you apply that first layer with the included brush, you can take a foam brush and finish it off. You can see the treble wire is down and the first layer of 30NF has been applied. I probably should have taken a video before I applied the 30NF, but I want to show you exactly how the wires line up with the magnets. So, I've also left myself plenty of wire so I can attach these to the new solder terminals when it comes time for that. Now here's where it gets a little bit intense. It's time to adhere the base wire to the diaphragm. Now the base wire has two wires per pass. So basically what happens is when the wire starts making its passes on one side and it completes going through all of the, uh, the passes that it can, it loops around again in the bottom and then comes back up and does the exact same thing a second time. So because of that, it can be a little bit tedious to get the wires kind of bind up closely, potentially. So this, this was built using about $10 worth of supplies from the hardware store. If you'd like to take this route with your rebuild, I will show a screenshot or a picture of this kind of zoomed in. I've basically... Uh, written the dimensions and everything you need to know on it. But what this allows you to do is take the base wire and just wrap it around these dowel pins, make your second pass and do it all over again. And then you can take it when it's on this, uh, this jig, you can flip it over and set it right down on your diaphragm It'll set on these screws right here to uh, make sure these don't uh, start poking through your diaphragm. Admittedly, when I built this, I thought it was going to make things go a lot more smoothly. I found that that was not the case once I finished the first speaker. The wires do not get perfectly straight or perfectly lined up next to one another. Essentially what you have to do is get the wire off of your jig, which is a little bit challenging, and once it's off, just spend a good amount of time correcting everything. 
the base wire is thicker so you can move it around on the diaphragm with the 3M Super 77 a lot more easily. It's a very forgiving wire unlike the thin stuff for the treble wire. So I think I'm going to try the jig again because I spent all this time building it and I might as well get the most out of it since it's here. Since each pair of magnet pans are mirror images of each other, your jig has to be able to adapt to each one so you can lay down the wires properly. The way this one's going to work is I'm just going to punch through these dowels since they were just press fit and then I will take this board and bolt it on the other side and that'll basically create the mirror image for me. I'll also have to take these off and move them to the other side but you know that's not very difficult. So. Here we go. I think if I had to do this again, I would not use the jig and I would just follow the MagnaPan instructions, which don't mention any use of jig. They say to just lay the wire down, just like I did with the uh, tweeter wire. I actually got this idea on the internet. I saw somebody make one of these out of metal, and maybe mine doesn't have a very good design, and that's what kind of caused me trouble. This view is cool and all, but when you're looking at it from above, you can't see where your wire is about to get laid down. So it's up to you whether you want to do this or not. If you're going to do it, design it better than I did and give yourself that visibility so you don't put it down in the wrong place like I do later in the video. Because it sucked. Alright, check it out. We've got the wire wrapped around the jig. There's two wires on each dowel. I hope. So you can see how I have these two bottom pins to allow the uh, the second pass loop to happen and uh, give some kind of setting for uh, the very first pass to know exactly where it's supposed to line up. Next thing I'll be doing is putting some Super 77 on that diaphragm and uh, we'll get this wire laid. So after I relieved some of the tension in the wire by loosening the bolts on the jig I started laying them down pass by pass and uh, this is where it gets kind of tedious. It's not the easiest thing to get it off of those dowels. Might be a design thing with the jig, but that was just my experience. So I'm laying them down, lining them up with the uh, lines on the diaphragm to what I think is correct, but I realize quickly something is very wrong. So I've got some bad news. I put the wire down in the wrong place. As I look at the way I've laid the wire here, and then compare it to the picture on my phone. Well, it looks like those two wires are supposed to be a little bit closer together than I've got them here. So, unfortunately what that means is I need to take each one of these wires and move it over by one pass. I'd had to do the exact same thing on the first one because I made the exact same mistake. So. Just goes to show, do a better job of learning from your mistakes than I do. This is going to take a little while. Okay, I got it taken care of. Basically all I did was I just kind of slowly removed each wire, one by one, in the order of the passes, and uh, just tacked it down between the magnets each wire was supposed to be between. So, as you can see now, that's what that end should look like. And that's what this end should look like with respect to the wires right there. As you can see it's still not perfect. What I'm going to do now is give it a second coating of 3M Super 77 and just kind of go over each wire, make sure that it's all nice and tight, straight. One thing I'll do is make sure that these bends are nice and neat. Make sure they're uh, flat on the diaphragm. Another thing I'll look for is stuff like this. Here's a good example. The one pass has the two wires very close to each other, but then some of the other passes have the wires kind of far apart. You're going to want those wires as close to each other as possible to make it as close to the original factory layout as possible. So, I'm going to get started on that. We'll see what happens. This is what's nice about the Super 77. It's pretty forgiving and it doesn't dry super fast so you've got time to go back and fix your uh, mistakes or imperfections. It's worth noting that this does not need to be absolutely perfect like it was from the factory. You can have some parts where they're like a little bit separated or a little bit uh, crooked. 
it's not a huge deal as long as in your straights you're pretty consistent with being lined up with those magnets. You also don't need to worry too much about the bends. They don't need to be absolutely perfect, but the biggest thing to worry about there is to make sure they are completely tacked down. Okay, after many minutes later, I have finally gotten the wire where it needs to be. I didn't really have much of a chance to show you what I was doing to manipulate the wires, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a section that's kind of, uh, maybe could be improved slightly. Um, basically all you really need to do is take your finger, apply a little bit of uh, pressure, and uh, the adhesive is a little bit forgiving. I've said that a million times, I'll keep on saying it, but uh, you can kind of move it so it lines up better and then drag your finger across it to kind of push it down. I think it's now time for the first layer of uh, 30NF for the base wire. And I'll get that second layer on the, uh, the treble wire while I'm at it. So this will be the final step in this video. If you need your adhesive to dry a little bit faster, you can use a box fan to uh, help out with that. In the next video, I will completely finish up the speaker. I'll get the wire soldered to the new terminals, replace the crossover capacitor, and put on the new socks. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you watch part three, and I hope you enjoy it.